Hello everyone. In today's video, I have with me a writer best known for her work on 99, Shore in the City, Go Go Are Gone, A Gentleman, Happy Ending, and most recently, Farzi. I have with me today Sita Menon. Uh, I'm so excited to finally talk to you. Thank you so much for doing this. Excited to be here. Thank you for having me on. So, um, when I was researching you, I mean, it's uh, unfortunately there's not a lot of info out there about it's you know by your... It's by design. <laughs> <laughs> so I was curious because uh, what I do know is that before becoming a screenwriter, you were a journalist. Um, you worked at Rediff as a film editor. Um, so how did you make that transition to screenwriting? So I had nothing to do with film. Uh, I was a journalist. My father was a journalist and uh, he, uh, at some point I decided I was good at writing. I just decided like that. And, uh, and I went against him because he didn't want me to become a journalist because he knew at that point, he said, oh, it's not for girls. It's not for women. It's very, very tough. And just because he said that, I said, okay, I will become a journalist. Um, and so <laughs> that's how I got in. My first job was with uh, Femina uh, okay. at the Times of India. Uh, then I had a brief stint at Screen uh, with the Indian Express. Then I went on to Rediff.com, which which I call my uh, foundation. Okay. Uh, I initially went on as the movies editor uh, and then slowly transitioned on to the lifestyle editor as well. So I was one of the people that launched the get ahead vertical, the lifestyle uh, vertical at Rediff. So while uh, being at Rediff and, you know, editing the movies channel, uh, yes, I was used to review movies and um, had that uh, outsider in perspective of movies. Um, and during, it was during one of those uh, years that I happened to chat with Rajan DK, who had just come out with a short feature. It used to be called, it used to be called Shadi.com. It's there somewhere in the cloud web somewhere. Oh, uh, short film. It was a very short, yeah, some 52 minutes. Uh, it was a short fiction, fi uh, fictional feature and was doing the rounds at the film festivals in those days. This was the time, you know, when the NRI filmmakers were blossoming, you know, all that uh, American Desi, American Chai, all of those films. So there was this new spurt uh, among an NRI Indian uh, filmmakers. So yeah, yeah. Raj and DK were one of them. And I happened to have a conversation with them for Edith. Okay. For an interview. And uh, we actually found ourselves hitting it off very well. So we started talking film, music, movies, everything, everything, all of it together because I gelled with them a lot on the fact that we used to watch a lot of world cinema, not just Indian films, but a lot of Hollywood, a lot of Asian, a lot of Korean, Japanese, Chinese, uh, French, German, the, the whole gamut. Um, so we had these huge conversations on film and all of that. And at some point they said, okay, so we have this short, this feature film that we've just written. Would you like to take a look at it? And uh, from there, I ended up becoming <laughs> the executive producer on that film uh, just because they didn't know what else to call me. EP just because there was no other title for me. Was this Flavors? Uh, that was called Flavors, yeah. Um, this was while I was working at Rediff. So this, that entire, my portion of it was entirely done online. Uh, so I coordinated with the music uh, composer, Mahesh, who was in LA at that time, you know, uh, California at that point. And we used to, he used to send me these samples and all of that scratches online on Yahoo Messenger and I would listen and say, yeah, yeah, okay, this sounds good. So it was entirely done on Yahoo Messenger. Yeah. Um, and it was a, how, how do I put this? It was a complete learning ground for me because I had no plans at all of mm. getting into 
or even writing for film nothing nowhere on the horizon um mm. so from doing knowing and doing nothing to actually getting on board uh to planning the music to getting involved in production to getting uh to planning the post production to actually design posters i didn't know photoshop i learned myself i taught myself photoshop so oh. <laughs> i didn't know, didn't know anything about music composing or lyrics i so i wrote the lyrics as well uh on flavors okay this yeah is- Yeah, this is like <laughs> baptism by fire. This is uh... and how <laughs> I got it, got my hands burnt in in many many ways, all in good ways. But <laughs> so, would you consider that your film school, like the that initial? That was literally yes, very much, very much. It was a film school like by fire. <laughs> so, and in terms of the writing, was uh, was ninety nine the first script that you ever wrote? Yes. So, f- flavors was. more as a consultant you know feedback and then refining the drafts and all of that i didn't really get to write anything which is a good thing because i didn't know anything then uh then 99 came in even in 99 i didn't know how a screenplay was structured i had no clue uh then i figured oh there's a software rajin dik is it oh there's a software so we <laughs> so got final draft on and started from there and didn't know how to write a screenplay but then started you know teaching myself um and a lot of this i ended up being groomed by rajan dk a lot uh, purely because i had i i was starting from zero i had no idea mm. so uh, hence a lot of my um the way i write and the way i think uh was groomed and influenced by them to a large extent at at that point uh yeah. more so because we all think alike the three of us think alike mm. so it wasn't a huge you know challenge to oh how i have to fit into that mold nothing yeah, like that yeah yeah so it just was a very very organic Oh, we all think alike. We have the same taste. We have the same sense of aesthetics. We have the same sense of a story. So yeah. we get together and write. Mm. Uh, the rest of it was honing. That took a long, long time just to to actually get the nitty gritties of actually writing. Took a long time for me. It wasn't until how oh, when when should I say uh, happy ending. gentlemen that i actually uh, uh started writing fully on my own uh you know the ending of 2014 a, i think yeah yeah, yeah. so it took me a lo- really long time to actually sit and write everything on my own just because uh you know you're new to it it's it's a it's a different world so you are not clued in so you teach and research and i'm, I'm sorry uh, teach yourself and learn mm. and re- and all of that so it's been a how do i say <laughs> learning step by step taking it one by one right and you're writing for the, the current project that you're working on as well right i'm guessing very much so yeah. yes citadel india yeah i am the head writer of uh, citadel india uh, created and developed this story uh, along with rajan dk um yeah. it's actually the most challenging project i have worked on purely because it's a this project is a global event franchise as they call it it has many parts to it so there's the us show which is uh the concept was created by the russo brothers yeah. of marvel avengers fame and uh, they designed it as this spy universe with global uh branches so there's us there is italy there is um india there is mexico and then there's brazil and france so there are these pieces to it and all of it functioning in this world of this spy this the world of spies uh it's our own parallel reality i wouldn't and well we call it parallel parallel reality although it isn't that meta it's just it's just like think of it as uh the avengers they function like normal people in the normal world but you don't see cops and you don't see politics and you don't see 
that coming in. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, and there's a lot of that coming up, I guess. So many versions and so many. Yes, it should because... be very exciting. Yes, because they, they're all standalone stories with, of course, touch points and crossovers. Uh, so that's been really, really exciting. Yeah, you will see somebody in the US showing up in the Indian show oh. and vice versa. So, like a shared universe, basically. Which is... Very much so. Just like how Iron Man sometimes appears in yeah, spider-man yeah, yeah. you know stuff like that so like that <laughs> that's fun i feel like when a when a film or a show is made i feel it's written three times like in the script stage then in the shoot shooting stage and then in the edit in the post production stage and i think arguably the writing stage is the toughest to crack before you you know even make it so when you're writing a show or a film uh, at what point at what point do you feel like uh, this script is ready to be shot when do you feel confident that about the material like that it's ready to go i mean maybe in there could be certain tweaks and you know certain changes which can happen you know to make it better but at the script level uh, like <laughs> there is never a point that to be really honest there is never a point that you think that oh oh this is perfect now it's ready to go not happening that's not that's not happening at all at least where <laughs> i am uh, or not necessarily perfect but at least you but, feel confident that you have everything yeah. so the characters and the players point, and... Um, a lot of yeah so once we have the overall story in place uh in this case episodes and uh, you know each episode in place each each uh all the arcs are in place it's flowing very well we've got the beats all right and we've got the screenplay done we we usually do about at least 3 4 5 drafts of the screenplay before it even gets greenlit yeah uh, so at which point the studio says yes yes this is good let's go so we say yeah. okay let's go uh no they don't know that we are sitting and changing it <laughs> <laughs> trying to All make it as it. good as yeah it. so it, it's a it's a how do i say it's a it's a tick that you can't uh resist because you always feel that there's something you can refine there's something you can better uh or this character can say something the same line in a better way uh or the sequence is not necessary there's a faster way to get to this plot point all of that so there's always that honing that keeps happening right up to the day of shoot um where we are still sitting and figure you know refining it of course on shoot as well there are other factors that come into play uh depending on locations depending on characters who are actually performing so well So, you know sometimes actors some actors which you don't account for they turn out to be such crackers that you mm. know you involve them a lot more than you uh, did in your script uh, because that's only fair uh, to that talent so uh, uh, yeah so <laughs> that's how it it never stops honestly yeah. it never stops and are like you like even now if i see farzi i'll be like oh i could have done this better <laughs> oh i could have <laughs> next season i'm not going to do this like <laughs> i'm going to do this better so are you taking notes yeah. for the next season or the you know the next uh, very much project so. yeah very much so yeah and, and are you uh, present on set during all these projects that you've done maybe with the exception of flavors Uh, uh flavors i couldn't because i had a job at that point but uh i've been present on set for pretty much all of my projects uh because i am the freedom i have with rajan dk is that i'm not just involved in writing i'm pretty much involved in the 360 of filmmaking so i'm involved right from casting to everything the whole gamut right up to release so uh because i think i have a voice and i think it's a good voice so and they listen to me <laughs> so i like to be with the exception of farzi because at that point it was uh, because of the covid pandemic um mm-hmm. there was a very limited crew allowed and they they were shooting in a bubble uh i did go but it was just for a very short while mm-hmm. 
but yeah this one i'm there on set like most of my projects i'm there on set every day so like you mentioned farzi and you know like i enjoyed farzi and i also enjoyed uh, 99 and shore in the city now what's Thank common you. yeah what's common in these projects is that there's there's research into certain things like counterfeiting gambling match fixing uh, the crime world i mean uh, shore in the city is inspired by newspaper stories yes so can you tell us about that research project when you're trying to write these films so 99 uh, was somewhat easier because all of us lo- uh, love cricket uh, all three of us love cricket so and uh, 99 was symbolic um, in a lot of ways where you know you're you're at you're stuck at 99 and it takes all your missing to hit that century is one and that's the hardest so uh 99 also was set in the year 99 um uh, you know before the whole uh, what was that by 2k why yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh and it was also the time the match fixing scandal broke out um so in many ways uh, it was it was very apt it was very poetic that uh, we called the film 99 um match fixing scandal was not so hard to research because i was in the thick of redef at that point uh, and redef has a very very strong cricket um grounding uh, our cricket channel used to be really really good it still is so um information was always there it was uh, just had to reach out and get it um sure was in many ways a baby of mine um it was like you said it was inspired of actual newspaper stories um and me being a journalist was easy for me to um pinpoint those stories and weave it into a narrative a fictional narrative yeah. uh, that makes sense um it, it didn't require too much research beyond um uh, targeting okay this is this is the story that we're going to take inspiration from um farzi on the other hand required a mammoth amount of research and we read everything from banksy to oh my god there's a lot of lot out there on counterfeiting and um it took a long time to actually get to what we wanted to say who the players would be in our story and uh, we finally whittled it down to let's just take a, a 360 uh, you know sort of a macro view of the entire world right from the smallest player the designer mm. the largest kingpin we had to show that world uh, and how they all connect um and how they play into our stories so we had to have the law we had to have politics we had to have the big kingpin uh, and we had to have international you know an international specter as well so there's an intelligence yeah intelligence is also involved yes very much yes <laughs> you also weave it with another like rajan dk world of family man like there's subtle hints yes, there yes very much yeah yeah So there was that was quite uh, yeah it's out there um <laughs> uh yeah I, so it happened in one of our readings it wasn't planned at all so you know the, like i keep saying farzi was born out of zoom calls so because we were all in the middle of the pandemic so we never met so all our writers room happened on zoom call so in one of the readings um, uh, i think it was at that time it was episode 6 uh it is still in episode 6 i think where uh, michael calls shrikant for help yeah, yeah one of the uh, so yeah it just came up very very suddenly and uh it just fell into place it was just so meant to be just meant to be a phone call it just correct pure happens and we just wove it in and it stuck never thinking that it would be you know it would boomerang so much and people would yeah, read yeah, yeah. So many meanings into it. it true, just true. 
And similarly, uh, you know, that scene where Michael is walking past the task office. Yes. Uh, yes. That was I mean, not at all planned. Absolutely not planned. Oh. We were shooting, yeah, we were shooting Michael's office, which happened to be in the next parallel lane uh, okay. next to the old task offices. Uh, and so Raj was like, oh, so he was, uh, you know, beset by this wave of nostalgia. Saying, oh, we shot Family Man here and so many memories and all of that. He went on that, uh, you know, happy rose tinted glass wave of memories and he said okay how about why should we make Michael walk here why don't we just make Michael walk there uh, in front of the task office and and then he started calling everyone from family man who's to see who's available yeah. and who can yeah. and do, do a passing and a whole you know a whole bunch of them said oh we're missing this we're not in town we're shooting all of that and finally two people actually dropped whatever they were doing from one in the city. They ran all the way to town, which is where this was being shot. And uh, that's where we have that passing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Chellam sir also. Chellam sir came in. Yes, yes. So so if we had Shrikant, we had to have Chellam sir. So <laughs> that, uh, that, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much liberty you are to answer, but is there a possibility to merge the two in like a separate piece i don't know if that's something we, we... honestly we haven't really discussed it mm. uh to the level we do see the merit but we mm. it's honestly not discussed yeah so yeah. it depends on what the story what the story demands and how it even works because next, yeah. three is a different world altogether in the sense that it's got nothing to do with farzi so uh, We'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At this point, yeah. all I can see is we'll see how we'll it see. works. We'll see. It'll, it's fun though. It's fun to think about it. Yeah. Well, if you can do an impromptu uh, scene, <laughs> yeah. then you will. Uh, yeah, you will see one impromptu thing. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's probably possible. An impromptu. Yeah. Is yeah. 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 <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I was watching uh, like recently. I was watching uh, Go Go Agon. Uh, and the gentleman and I'd seen happy ending a while ago and uh, what was uh, uh, interesting is that like obviously these films deal with very they're popular genres uh, you know there's the zombie film there's the spy action movie and then there's this rom-com and uh, but what's funny is that these films have a very unique sort of funny and Indian spin on it you know Yes. Like for me, like Goa, uh, Go Go Agon was all about like parodying this concept of Goa being a party place and yes, and gentlemen like Siddharth Malhotra's character is leading a double life and he's yes playing a spy, but he's also that guy that you know you'd introduce to your mom or something. <laughs> so Very much. same with the happy ending where you know the writers to write a rom com and think about all the yes. genre conventions. So like yeah, uh, what goes into like making and breaking all these genre conventions? It starts with something, it's as simple as everybody does uh, everybody does romantic comedies, everybody does crime comedies, uh, horror, action thrillers, all of that. Uh, but what do we bring to the table? What do, how do, how can we make the same concept? It's a zombie comedy. How can we make this our own and unique and different from uh, which has a voice and that voice uh, it's a distinct voice um, it, it just starts with that, that none of us are satisfied with uh, okay let's just make a crime comedy mm -hmm. there has to be there has to be some meaning some substance to why uh, we write what we write uh, it has to make sense in, like in our heads as to why we're doing this because, oh, this is one edge. Oh, this is a nice high concept. Um, that, it's as simple as that. I, I can't tell you. Uh, I mean, there's no other <laughs> explanation. Uh, so, yeah. There's plenty of humor also. And uh, and I think I've some an article I read where you had given an interview, you mentioned 
Uh, and earlier when you spoke, you mentioned how funny Raj and DK is, and you also share the same kind of humor with them. Um, so, and comedy is very hard to write. So, how do you how do you crack that uh, in any of these projects? It starts with the three of us, in the sense that we're all. I like to say that we have a nice sense of humor. Uh, our conversations are always bantery we never we never have a straight conversation so um so when you when you are talking like that we are constantly ribbing and repartying and picking up on details that no and ribbing the other person on those details so mm. so like it can be as simple as a spelling mistake and we just take off uh on, like you know on whatsapp or somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. the word that's it you're done for so yeah. <laughs> so it's just i think we like to look at life with a sense of humor not to trivialize um life or or mm. the situations that our characters are in it's never that it's just to it it just uh, we feel that even i feel that it goes down easy any situation goes down easy if you look at it with a little lightheartedness um as and when it demands uh pure drama is pure drama but mm. uh you don't have to uh be you can serve your content in a lighter way as well mm. also i think a lot of it comes from your observation right of yeah very much and, and... But like yeah. do you take mental notes like the situation in real life was really Always. funny my friends hate me because uh, because i'm 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 very very silent i'm only observing and th- the minute i go into one silence they're like okay this is going to find <laughs> you're going to write <laughs> about this somewhere and really hate you for it because i'm always constantly taking down ah. notes of my so I mean i'm always observing you know people's characteristics the way they talk the yeah, way they yeah. move uh what people do how people react yeah. um characteristics ticks everything so all so of right. it is recorded so the right hand is always 24/7 um, yeah constantly mind is uh, whirling yeah. always <laughs> it's hard to sleep sometimes because your mind is uh, it's hard to shut off uh because ah, your constant, okay. your mind is always active uh more so because there's a lot of work now so <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah 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 hard to shut off uh, completely off work true obviously uh you're a key and very regular collaborator of raj and dk it's a collaboration ever since their first ever film um it's pretty it's almost 20 years actually since you know Yeah. Is yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Of, yes. Yeah. Um Oh my how, god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how is that uh, collaboration like with them? What does it involve and as a writer and director, what is that partnership like? It's actually very easy uh and extremely difficult at the same time. In the sense that we um uh, we like to challenge ourselves uh, all the time so you we're not satisfied with with the ordinary uh, how how do i i don't want to i i don't know how to say this without sounding patronizing or superior i don't mean to at all uh, we have our own standards of um of writing and thinking and uh, narrating a story uh so if, with as far as the partnership is concerned all of us at least i i work in silence i don't work uh in a group of people so i do my thing and i go and present my ideas to rajan dk and they are the they are the both of them are the type to talk and talk it out and think mm-hmm. and they think on the feet and come up with stuff and i am not that person i will listen and absorb and i'll go back home think about it come back with a whole new <laughs> slew of ideas um for them so it's it's worked only because a we are friends 
B, we know the way uh, the other thinks. We know and are on the same page with the other. Uh, there are arguments, of course, there are arguments. I, we have like humdinger arguments all the time. But uh, it comes from a place of, I want this better than it is right now. How can we make this better? It comes from that place. So we, all three of us are very clear on that. So yeah. hence it works. Yeah. Any, I just want to know, is there any recent film or show that uh, you saw and you thought the writing was just brilliant? And, and let me know why. Succession, uh, to name one. Uh, so well crafted, so well uh, written. Uh, and the characters, it, it's, I always like, I love it when... Uh, the characters reveal themselves more and more as uh, the, the episode and the series progresses. Um, it's just so thrilling. And so it's like peeling off layers and seeing yeah. new uh, facts of the same character that you've been watching for, let's say, some three episodes. And you're like, hmm, you didn't know this existed in this person as well. Mm. So... Um, I I love writing like that. So yeah. uh, I like to think that I write like that. My writing is like that as well because I don't like to reveal all my lay out all the cards uh, uh, in you know all at at the get go. Uh, I like to reveal my character slowly, bit by bit, and that's the kind of writing I. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of uh, shows that I find myself liking um, very instinctively. Um, what else? Last of Us, really nice as well. Um, what else? I'm I'm blanking out now. Anything <laughs> in the Indian space, like regional films or Hindi or anywhere else? Uh, only when uh, you know, I hear lots of ni- good things being said about a particular Hindi series or you know, uh, Indian uh, series. I will I will definitely go check it out. Yeah. Uh, the last good series that I, you know, the first um, Delhi Crime was really ah. nice. I really enjoyed watching it. Um, yeah. what, uh, Leila was good as well. It was quite chilling. Uh, my references are all very old. I haven't had, A, because I really haven't had time. And if I have time, I go and sample what the rest of the world has to offer. Yeah. Um, because I'd rather, uh, how do I say this? I would like to challenge myself the way they challenge themselves, uh, in the way they write, in the way they tell their stories. Um, so yeah. that's All where right. I am. Now, what advice would you give, uh, screenwriting advice specifically, uh, would you give to people who are want to become a screenwriter or who are writing scripts? What would be your advice be to them? Step one, sit ass on table. Step two, open laptop. Step three, <laughs> crank it out. Keep writing. Don't stop. Write every day, seriously, every day. Uh, There is no other better solution. Even if you don't feel like it. (laughs) Even if you don't like, yeah, even today the day is bad. If that's all you got for that day, if that is the exact expression by which you want to convey, write it, it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) But do write. Uh, You have to write, that's the only, uh, that's the only way. It's a frighteningly lonely, frighteningly solitary world. Um, you're literally living within this this <laughs> space, mm. within your head. Uh, yeah. There's no one to, um, you know, it's not like how do I, it, like acting or like directing. There's always feedback. There's instant feedback uh, mm. from people around you. But when you're writing, you're faced with a ton of insecurities just because you're at least where I I come from. I think of am I am I doing justice number one to this story? 
Am I treating this character with kindness? Am I doing the right thing by the story? Uh, you know, you you start there and you're besieged by uh, these doubts that constantly plague you because most of the time we're not perfect. We, I, I don't consider myself perfect at all. Uh, there's such a long way. I started late uh, in the film world, in the writing space. Um, and I'm learning. I don't think I will ever stop because there's always something, someone out there better. There are better stories being uh, narrated and told. Um, it's a constant process. So be aware that you will be in your headspace for a very, very long time. And if you like your company, uh, that's half the battle one for a writer. Um, yeah, because there are days I don't step out of the house. I don't see people uh, except for the people who come and work in my house. <laughs> so, are they um, like, uh, are there pros and cons to writing alone or having co-writers? Is there any kind of uh, difference you see? Anything visible? Uh, writing alone, like I said, you're in your own world. Uh, when you write with someone like a Rajan DK, there's there's the benefit of that feedback coming yeah. to you. Uh, there's a benefit of uh, sparking of ideas, new ideas coming in that you might not have thought of. Um, yeah. So in that sense, that's the that's the biggest pro of yeah. working with uh, people like Rajan DK. Yeah. Or a good co-writer. Mm. Uh, the cons, I don't know if there's a con. <laughs> it's worked out well. <laughs> it worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about the, the screenwriting process you enjoy the most? So, besides the crafting of the story, you know, once you have your characters in place, once you have your story in place, it's the actual writing out of the screenplay that I enjoy the most because that's when all my characters are breathing, you know, to I call them uh, breathing. They're living and breathing beings by then because you're giving them voices and you're giving them, giving them actual actions that you can visualize in your head and yeah. uh, you see it unfold in front of you like in your eyes uh, in your head uh, that's what I enjoy the most writing out a screenplay because it brings alive that world that you've been so far has been theory in, yeah. in that sense yeah. you know what I mean uh, so yeah that's the process I love the most I, I, was... I, I like it so I'm good at it uh, so uh, which is why I like it. <laughs> I was curious, do you do uh, maybe on Farzi or Citadel or any other projects, Have you? do you do a table read once the script is done before you go shoot? We do. Um, the table read happens with our ADs. Uh, we do our reading. The table reads happen uh, first before the cast comes in. We do our own table reads. Yeah. Um, with the Hindi dialogues because I write in English. Uh, all mm. three of us write in English. Uh, we don't have sufficient proficiency in Hindi wordplay um, because that's not our first language. So we do, I do do a Hindi pass, uh, but it's not, it needs a professional touch. Uh, so there's a dialogue writer that comes in, Hindi dialogue writer that comes in and uh, I am pretty clear on what the character, how the character needs to speak or what the language of that character should be. So there is that process of, you know, that, that's full of table reads. Um, that process is full of table reads. Of course, then when the actors come in, you know, there's intense reads as well. Yeah. And when you hear that, your the words out loudly, do you see your script a little differently because now it's there's some life given to it and there could be a certain nuance to a dialogue or a certain rhythm that you're seeing does that uh, change how you see the script once you've written it uh, 
Oh, that's that's actually the most exciting part of it because uh, you've been living with this character for let's say one year, two year, three years, whatever number of time, whatever period it is, uh, and suddenly when an actor comes in, breathes life, not only breathes life, breathes fire into that character. It's just so exciting to see that because uh, you know they go. I love it when people go beyond the words. uh beyond just the words written on the paper i love it when actors do that uh in a good way so <laughs> yeah it's quite surreal actually because you know how it is when you're writing you you're just writing all these lines in the story and characters are saying this and moving here and doing that and all of a sudden there's somebody who's actually doing it it's quite out of body there <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 yeah it's like you said surreal it is feel surreal yeah yeah all right well uh, thank you so much for doing this uh, pleasure I, <laughs> i had a blast you know uh, hearing you know what you had to say about the projects you were part of and yeah i'm looking forward to citadel and you know all the other <laughs> upcoming projects will be part thank of thank you Thank you it's been it's been great fun thank you for having me on thank you thank you take care i hope you like this conversation if you like this video please do hit the like button please do comment below and let me know your thoughts if you like such content and you want to see more such content please do hit the subscribe button thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time